today what I'm going to do is a little bit of cleanup on this white backdrop. If you're in a busy studio, you use white backdrops quite a bit. People come in, they walk, they trample all over them, and we end up with all kinds of dirt and crud in it, as you can see by this image. Uh, this is me, by the way, sitting inside of a little suitcase in my studio. I'm going to show you three ways to do this. So the tutorial is going to be a bit longer, but you're going to get three methods. A couple of them are a bit longer, and one of them is a bit shorter. And so if you want the quick method, you're going to have to skip ahead a little bit. The first and most common method of cleaning up this backdrop is, first of course, duplicate your background because you don't want to mess with the original. And then go to your quick selection tool and select the person in the image. In this case, we are selecting me. Now what I'm going to do is kind of zoom in here a little bit. And using the Alt key, I'm going to get some more of this white a little bit better. So just hitting the Alt key on my keyboard uh, brings up the little minus sign. And that will allow me to kind of dial in. And you're going to hold the key down. Sock here. I just let the key up. And a little bit around the suitcase here. Alt key a little bit. Oops. And just try to dial in those edges as details as best as you can. Okay. But as we can see, it's not perfect, especially around the hair. Okay, the next thing that you're going to want to do is pull up your refine edge tool. But before you do that, you want to inverse this image. So go up to select inverse or control shift I if you prefer. And what that's going to do is change the selection to the white instead of uh, me. From there to pull up the refine edge tool we want to hit Control alt r on a PC. I don't know what the keyboard uh, shortcut is on a Mac but it's Control alt r on a PC. When you pull up the refine edge view by the default I think it puts you on the onion skin one. I like the overlay red. It doesn't really matter it's just giving you the, however you want to look at it but with the red it makes it very clear to me what as to what's selected or not. The next thing you're going to want to do is choose this second brush on the upper left, the Refine Edge brush. And then you just want to start kind of painting in around that hair. And if you notice, the hair itself is getting a bit red now. And that's how this Refine Edge brush tool works. And it's really handy for like girls' hair where they've got a lot of hair sticking up all over the place or if you have uh, just more detailed work that you need to do. You can kind of see there, it works both ways. I'm kind of under the arm. And you can go around the whole image. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this because I don't think that is necessary and I really dislike other people's super long YouTube tutorials. I want to make one myself. But you get the point. Okay, now I hit OK. The next step that most people will do with this method is to grab a paintbrush. They might select it to 100 opacity. I'd go a little bit less so that way I can maybe uh, paint it a couple times without um, uh, messing it up. So I'm going to go actually 40. I'm going to select white paint, hit OK, and you can see it's getting rid of all that crap back there. And let's just do it once more up here. Notice now, it is all cleaned up. It's nice and white, but my socks don't quite look right. You can, you're gonna have to get in here and still do more cleanup on this and get these details if you want. Okay, the second method I'm gonna show you here is a little bit different, but it's gonna get, help keep some of these shadows and uh, make it look a bit more natural than that first method. So what you wanna do is duplicate your layer again, and then you want to um, go to your filter, select filter, noise, and median. Uh, I've seen tutorials where they use dust and scratches as well, uh, so you can do that and it's, the process is relatively similar. Um, I think the median one's a little bit better though, so that's the one I go with. So what it's gonna do is you'll notice it basically blurs the image. So you wanna bring it up pretty, pretty high on the, on the radius. The ground 
is actually looking nice and smooth now. But what it's doing also is it's saving that shadow. So we're not going to lose that shadow like we did with that earlier method. You want to hit OK here. Give it a second. Now with the image, I'm all blurry, of course, and so we need to get rid of that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new layer mask. So I just hit the Add Layer Mask icon in the lower right here. And then what you want to do is inverse it. So hit Control, uh, Control I. I don't know why it took me a second to remember that. Control I. And now what's happened is it uh, switched it. And you're going to go to your brush tool and select white because we want to paint on white. Zoom in and start painting. So I've got my brush set to 40%. Um, go ahead and put it to 100 on this one if you want. And what you want to do is just kind of start painting in onto this white. Um, I might go with a bit of a harder brush so that I'm not getting into products there. Now, if you do go over accidentally, like you in this situation, just switch to a black paint and go back over to that. And then when you fixed it, go back to your white. So that's the nice thing about using a layer mask. Now what it's doing, as you can see, we're keeping that shadow without really losing the more of a natural look. Uh, especially you notice we've got a lot of these little spots up here on the left, the one I just got rid of. You know, boom, done. All right, I'm not going to spend any more time on this because you get the point. So this looks really nice. Uh, it's much more believable as an image, and we've got the nice shadows. But once again, it takes a bit of time. And if you're working in a studio and you got to power through a lot of the stuff, uh, you might not necessarily have that time. Okay, and now we're going to go into the third and quickest method. Simply what you're going to do is duplicate your layer again, as always. You're going to go to the Dodge tool on the left, select Dodge. For exposure, I put it about 30%. In the range, you want to go to Midtones. For brush, choose a nice soft brush. And then simply start painting, or, you know, going over everything. So notice it's just getting rid of those spots and around here and the reason why I do it on 30% this way I can you know maybe go over it once see how it looks and if I like it or not get rid of these spots up here the caveat to this one of course is that it isn't as detailed but the nice thing about it, since it is just doing those shadows, notice what I'm doing here. I can go over this suitcase, and it's not going to be too noticeable if I go over just a little bit. Same thing around here with the socks. We're still getting that shadow. And we can um, kind of go over if we need to. But if you look at the image, quick cleanup. And that's pretty much it. So this is probably the number one way that I uh, clean up a backdrop. But if there are a lot of details that I need to get into, I will probably use that second method with the uh, medium. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Hopefully it wasn't too long and boring, uh, which is why I do these tutorials, because I hate long and boring tutorials when I need one. All right.